G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. Today we are making bags. Now I do love to design bags and I have a brand new one for you. I did show you all this little one on the patchwork chair. A beautiful little structured boutique style bag. It's got a little top handle, it's got a, a shoulder strap. Very, very structured and boxy, holds itself beautifully. But I promised you that I would make one in a character style. So we have everybody's favorite bear here in this bag. Sweetest little novelty bag. The sweetest little button charms. Couple of little bees there hanging on the side. I'll show you how to make those. And I'm gonna give you a whole lot of options from using a lot of my other patterns to bring it in and work it into this bag very quick and easy to make, surprisingly easy to make, and just a really fun, different um, project to make, I think, coming up for the start of the new year. So you can certainly on sell them. They're great for on selling craft markets and so on, or perhaps on your online store. I encourage you all to do that. Um, so if you want to make this one along with me, you will find your free pattern. The link to the free pattern is in the drop down description box below. You'll see a little word that says more, click on that, it'll open it up, you'll see the link there. That means you can print out your own free pattern templates on your own home printer. I've given you a big blurb there in that same drop down box to give you a hand with printing out. Do make sure that you check your measuring bar that I've got on every page of your pattern. It'll make sure that you're getting all of your pattern pieces correct. So let's get busy and let me show you how to make this beautiful basic bag. So let's begin by having a look at what we're going to need to make this little bag. I'm going to first show you the one version of making it. So this is the basic version where the construction is exactly the same. I just haven't added something on the front like we are with the, this one today. I've just covered it with buttons, which is super sweet, makes a great little designer bag. I've also added a top handle on the top, which I won't be doing on this one because of the little bear's ears. But you can certainly make it up. I will run you through how to make that little top handle and I'm certainly giving you that pattern piece as well. So just to have a look inside, it's a simple magnetic clasp closure. If you don't have one of those or you don't wanna use one of those, you can use uh, some Velcro pieces. Inside, lovely little structured bag with just a simple uh, pocket in there as well. It holds itself very, very well and it is constructed by sewing it up first and then we blanket stitch it all together so we get that lovely boxy look. So with this one, of course, we are making basi basically the same bag, only we're adding that beautiful little face on the side on that front flap. Now, this bag is made up in fabrics. I do recommend that you use a slightly heavier weight fabric. So an upholstery fabric is really, really good with this one. And that's what I'm using here. So I'm going for these lovely brown warm tones with some red through it, um, which will work well with my bare face. They are interfaced. You do need to interface your fabrics, even if they are a heavier weight. And I have both of those front, uh, the back and front flap panels cut. You need two of those, both interfaced. You also need some kind of filler now you can use, as I have, I've got a piece of felt that has fusible webbing ironed onto the back. So it makes it fusible. We can fuse it straight on. Gives your bag lovely structure. You can alternatively use fusible foam instead. Fusible on this side, it's only about four millimeters thick. Um, and this is what I would be using if I had any, <laughs> but I'm waiting on an order. So, but a piece of felt will do just as well. So that's our front and back flat pieces. You can also cut two different fabrics for these. So your interior looks like the bag is lined with a different color, which is what I did do with this one. The inside was just a cotton paisley. So that gives you more options there. We then have our front bag pieces and that's two of those again just interface that same fabric with my filler piece you've got your pattern templates for all of those the gusset that goes on the underside of the bag that gives the bag its volume you've got your two pieces there and then you have your filler piece again 
and we also have an inside pocket an interior pocket that one is cut out just from two pieces of fabric so I'm bringing in the red gingham which is also going to be the strap color so that's my inside pocket my strap I've got that already pressed up my strap with the gingham and it is just simply a strip of fabric I've given you the measurements are in your uh, on your pattern sheet and I have made mine for an adult's length because believe it or not I do wear these bags even if they're childlike um, that's just me um, however I've got the measurement is for an adult so remember to bring it down to about a 90 to 80 centimeters long if you're making it for a child and and of course the easiest way is just to take a measurement of the child where the bag would sit so I've got that one all pressed up, ready to go. Then we have the face pieces, which will be added to the front flap. And we have just two of those pieces cut from double felt. Now double felt is two pieces of felt joined together with fusible webbing. This is the best way to make this one because we are not turning the head through and we don't want any white interfacing core, but we do need it to be quite solid that's why double felt is the best. Also, double felt is made by joining your two rectangles of felt together completely, fusing it together and then cut out your shapes and then repress it. That way you'll get a really clean edge with it bonded all the way to the edge. I would never cut out two pieces and then try and join them together with a piece. You'd never get it nice and even. So two front and back you can see I've got a, a few different variations of yellow there in the felt but this very rich gold is what I'm using for the actual face you then need the little nose piece which is felt with fusible webbing added you need two eye buttons make sure they're correct they're the correct size again I'll give you the exact size of those I think they're probably around about between 12 and 15 uh, millimeters, but the correct size will be written in your materials and requirements. We are going to need some black top stitching thread. We're gonna run through the machine. We're gonna put in a smile. We're gonna put in some nose lines and some eyebrows. It's all done on the machine, super easy. You can do it by hand if you like. So we will also need pearl thread for sewing our bag together. Again, I'm gonna bring in the red so I put to pull all of this together. By the way, I'm using pink felt. It doesn't have to match because it won't be seen. Um, don't be distracted by that pink felt. Uh, I've got red, it's an eight ply to sew the bag together. And I have black pearl thread, eight ply to sew around and really outline that head. So it's a, a very much an animated look. I've got some extra pearl thread that is a five ply because I actually want to make a couple of little charms to hang on the side. I'll show you how to do those. Beautiful little bee charms just made out of buttons and a bead. I'll show you exactly how to put them together and how many buttons you'll need. Um, so I've got that second one all ready to go to show you. I've got a D ring to hook onto the strap so that I can add those charms. You can use any kind of a split ring, anything like that will work. I've also got my magnet closure. As I said, you can use some Velcro pieces if you would rather do that. Certainly Velcro pieces can be easier for a child to handle. Um, totally up to you. So now let's get started. We are by, we're going to begin by ironing on our filler pieces to all of our appropriate uh, bag construction pieces so let's move everything else out the way so I have my filler pieces I've removed the backing paper and I'm going to press them onto each of the corresponding pattern pieces on just on we only do it on one side because the two are going to be sewn together and then turned through so it doesn't really matter which piece out of the two that you press it onto. It really doesn't make too much difference. Although on the front panel, because I'm putting a 
clasp through there, the magnetic closure, I like it to be on the front facing panel, but it really doesn't make any difference once it's all turned through and pressed together. It's all pretty, the, pretty much the same. So I'm going to make sure that I've got that nice and even. There's the same amount of space all the way around it with each of those pieces and including that gusset piece. Get those pressed, fused into place. So now we have those filler pieces all pressed into place. We're going to add our magnetic closure and we can do that. You can also add your Velcro pieces if that's what you're doing, you do it at this stage. So if you haven't added one, one of these before, now this front flap is the flaps coming over. So this is the receiving part. So you want the negative one and you take your little cover shank there you've got a mark on your pattern template that shows you exactly where that clasp needs to go I've just drawn in those two lines taken some very sharp scissors and snipped those turn that over and then we're going to take our receiving piece you want to make sure that you've really pushed all that fabric down around it I'm going to add that little back section and just take something nice and firm to push those into the center and really clamp that down and then we've got a little clasp nice and secure on both pieces so from here we're going to start constructing these. So we are going to start with the back and front main body flap. We're going to line those up. I've got marks on your pattern piece that show you the area that we're going to leave open. We're going to put right sides together like that. You can go ahead and pin or clip all the way around and we are going to sew just a four to five millimeter seam allowance from this mark all the way around the outside edge to this mark and we're leaving this open because that's where we're going to pull it through. We're going to do the same with these pieces, the two front pieces. Again on your pattern piece there will be marks, I haven't got it on here on mine there'll be a mark here and here and you'll do the same thing right the way around and turn it through and with these gusset pieces this is a little different Put right sides together you'll have marks on your pattern templates I'm just going to pop mine in here just enough to turn through and you also will have marks at the top two ends this end and this end the same because that's where the strap is going to be inserted so with the gusset section you're going to stitch from the first mark of your opening up and around make sure you back and forth we're going to leave this section open. I'm going to start again here, go all the way around until you get to the other two marks here. Do the same, leave an opening there and all the way up to here. So I always reinforce my corners. I always do a couple of stitches on my corners, but this is just a bag. It won't be stuffed. Um, so we don't need to sew that seam twice. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and clip those curves with your pinking shears if you like or just notch those obvious curves before you turn it through and give it all a good press. Okay so let me show you what I've done there. So I have turned those through. I've taken my knitting needle and pushed out all of those curves as I said and given it a good press. As I've pressed it I've turned the openings under and then on each of these two pieces I've gone ahead and sewn a top stitch, set your stitch length to 2.5, a top stitch all the way around the outside edge and then you've got a beautiful clean finish. 
Also, don't skip this part because this top stitching line, which is about four millimetres in from the edge, is going to be your guideline that's really going to help you sew that blanket stitch all the way around with your construction. Makes it so much easier. And this gives it a really lovely, professional, really boxy finish. So then I've done the same on this one. So this opening was here. I've turned it under, pushed out all of my seams, pressed it, and sewn that top stitch all the way around. So our bag will be constructed like this. You can see that little clasp and we're gonna have a lovely boxy little effect. Now on the gusset that goes underneath the bag here, I've done the same thing and I have, remember we had an opening in the side, I've pressed that under. This time I've just stitched down each side pressed those little space, the little um, openings under, but I haven't stitched across here yet because now we're gonna go ahead and make our strap and then we're gonna insert those in before we stitch across. So to make the strap, let's move all this out the way. Remembering mine's longer because it's for an adult size. You cut your strap to the length and measurements I've given you. The width is six centimetres across, so however long you decide to make your strap is up to you. You might be able to see there that all the way along the centre of that strip, I've drawn a, a line, a light line, all the way straight down the middle. And then I have folded each edge into almost the middle. Pressed it in each side like that, then pressed them over again and you've got this beautiful very strong strap. I interfaced mine because my fabric was quite fine so now it's a lovely sturdy strap. So now I'm going to take this to the machine and I'm just going to top stitch all the way down one side and then all the way down the other. There we go so that completes my strap and you can see that doubled line of stitching it really does give it that lovely professional finish. So now we've taken the, the gusset piece of our bag. Remember, we've got those little openings there. All you need to do is slip that strap in the end. So just tuck it in a little way, probably about a centimetre, and do make sure that it's beautifully centred. And then you can just stitch straight across, continuing on with that top stitch and that's going to hold that in place. Now, if you are doing as I am and adding a D ring or something that doesn't open up, you need to slip that in there first so that that doesn't get left out. If you're using a split ring that you can slip on afterwards, then that's fine. So I'm going to stitch that across and then I'm going to make sure that I don't twist this. And I do the same with the other end slip it in and stitch across. There we go, so that has our bag gusset with the handle attached securely. I've gone over that about three times on each side so it's nice and secure uh, with that D-ring already in place. We can move that one aside. Now we're going to create our pocket, our inside pocket. It's just your two pieces, you've got your template for that. Leave an opening at the side. So on one of the shorter sides, you want to leave an opening for turning through. So you're just going to stitch all the way around that pocket, about a four millimeter seam allowance. Turn that one through, go ahead and push all of those seams out. You can trim the corners first before you turn it through so you get a nice sharp point. Press that and make sure you press that opening closed. Okay, so the placement for this pocket, you can see there that I've pressed that all out. The opening is here. When we stitch this in place, that will close that opening. So just take your, the front part of your bag and sit it on the inside part of the bag. This is your fold over here. So you want the pocket to sit on the underside here and to sit just a little lower than the level of the bag. So I'm guessing that's around about an inch about an inch and a half down. Make sure it is nicely centered here. And then you can go ahead, measure it from side to side, make sure it's straight and then stitch around the outside. You can divide it into sections. So you could make like a little chapstick holder there with the other pocket a bit bigger. I'm just gonna stitch around and just keep it one single pocket. 
and then we are going to go ahead and put this one together. So there we go, we've got that pocket stitched into place just with a blanket applique stitch and I've added a little heart there just for something sweet on the inside. If you are making these for resale, which you certainly can, if you want to add your own personal little tag there, somewhere here on the pocket is a really good place to do it. So now we can put this one aside because we're gonna start constructing this bag and we do that by sewing our gusset into place on our front section first. And so I like to start, I'm working on the front section I'm going to start by lining up those two edges there because this is going to fit all the way around up to the other side. You'll find that it will fit beautifully. So you can clip it into place or pin it into place, whatever works for you. I'm just going to throw a couple of pins in there, starting at the top. And then I will pull this one around and pin the other side. So I just work the rest in. I don't overcast, I just have it pinned into place and sew my blanket stitch as I go. And just fit the rest in around that curve. It's much easier to do than you might think. making sure that you get those edges together. This is what creates that lovely boxy look to this bag. And it also makes it hold its shape. It's a little bag that when you open it up, it doesn't collapse on itself, which is really lovely. So I will just pin that right the way around, make sure that's all fitting nicely. And then I'm going to take my single strand. I've got a very long strand, I don't like to run out single strand of my pearl thread. I'm going for red and I'm going to come in on the underside here. I'm going to come in between the two layers right at the top part there. Pull that one through. Remember that you are sewing just through the fabrics. You're not sewing through that filler felt. So again, not as difficult as you might think. I want to hide that knot in between those layers. So keeping that together nice and straight, lined up. I'm going to take my needle straight through and start that blanket stitch. Bringing my needle out through the loop. I like to do two stitches, one right on top of the other to start with, so that that top section is nicely anchored in. You can see my needle is going through nicely and I have the benefit of this top stitching line as my guide for my blanket stitch. Now keep those stitches nice and small and even. And make sure your needle is going straight through parallel. Don't be twisting that and having your needle going through on a diagonal. It needs to be going straight through so it's the same depth on the other side. And that binding stitch should be right in the center. So stitches nice and small and even. Pulling that through each time and it's such a lovely effect around the outside edge of that bag. So that's all I'm going to do, stitch right the way around. Follow those curves up, finish up with two stitches on top of each other at this top edge. Okay, so here is the front of our little bag coming along nicely yet and you can see there that blanket stitching just adds a beautiful detail and gives it that, like I said, that lovely boxy look that will push out there. So now we're just going to do the same with adding the back section. Remember that we're not turning it through. So your pocket should be on the inside and we're going to be, again, just pinning and stitching on 
the outside piece. Now you've got to make sure that you have your marks in place. I can't give them to you on the pattern template because everybody's stitching is slightly different. Your seam allowance might be slightly different, but you can see how easy it is to match it up and see where that needs to go to because you've already sewn in this front section. What you do have to make sure of is this is a straight line. So make sure it's lined up, everything's nice and straight and parallel so your bag won't have any twist in it. The exact measurement for mine is 11 centimetres from this mark to the base. But as I said, it could be different for yours. So what I'm going to do now is just simply line up those marks that I've measured and I will clip or pin. In this case, I'm going to clip those two top edges together. And then I'm going to just fit it all in all the way around. Just as I did before, as I sew my blanket stitch, I'll add a couple of pins at the base there. So now I'm going to go ahead again and sew that same blanket stitch working from this side all the way around. Now you can continue on right the way around that flap which will come over your bag and do up at the front. So you will have this part and remember you've got your lovely guideline of your top stitch that can be all blanket stitched. I'm going to do that because I want to bring a little bit more red in. Let me show you that on my other bag. So this is the finish that you're going to get and it's really lovely. You can do that in any colour that you like. But if you are making a more of a conservative sort of a bag and you just want more of a, a plain look, this top stitching is perfectly adequate. Perfectly adequate and can really enhance the style. So, and also some of you will be making the bag with just a little handle and um, and that's perfectly acceptable. But if you are going to continue with your blanket stitching, you'll just do all the way around when you come up from sewing in the back section. So let me get that done. So now there you can see that that is our completed basic little, uh, very structured um, satchel bag. And it is beautiful just on its own. You can imagine just using gorgeous fabrics and open that up. We've got our lovely little pocket inside and you could leave the bag just like that. Now, this is the base that works so well for so many things. With this little one, before I even put those two layers together of that top flap, I sewed on all my buttons. I was very careful to leave enough room around the outside edge so it didn't interfere with my sewing and turning it through. So you can certainly add anything in that way and do any of your work uh, that is like a flat applique, you can do that before you even start putting the bag together. Or we can do what we're going to do now, we're going to take it another step because there's so many options you can use within my Pay It Forward pattern range where you can add something to the front here. In this case, this is a brand new pattern, we're going to be adding that lovely everybody's favourite bear is going to be there on the front, simply attached by the two eyes. But I have many patterns that you could definitely adapt. I'll give you a few ideas at the end. So for now, we're going to move ahead, pop that little base bag aside. I'm absolutely loving the colors. And we are going to start by constructing the head. So remember it's in two pieces, two pieces of double felt. And I'm going to start by adding the nose. Now the facial features on this one are really important that you get them right. I have given you the exact diagram to show you exactly where everything goes and make sure that the eye position is right. This is not being turned through so if you follow exactly that diagram you'll get it right. It's very important when you're representing a character that is well known that you get all of those that perspective correct. So do follow that. So in this case, I've got a little mark there that shows me where the very base of that nose should sit right in the center. So I've removed my backing paper from my felt. I'm going to make sure that's all lined up nicely. And I'm going to press that one into place 
using a hot iron and a protective cloth. And then I'm going to take it to my machine and I'm going to sew a tiny, tiny little black satin stitch all the way around. You could sew a blanket applique stitch by hand. I want it to be quite sturdy and I do like that that edge will be very bound with that zigzag stitch. Um, you could sew a straight stitch if you like, um, but the zigzag stitch really will give it also that lovely dimed effect. So get it pressed into place and stitched into place. Okay, so there you can see I have stitched around that nose and that is beautifully settled into place. And because we're using double fill, it does give that lovely amount of volume when we stitch through these layers as well. So we have our eyes marked in place. Our next step is to go ahead and mark in the mouth and the corner smile lines, the line across the top of the nose and the two little quizzical eyebrows. Now you can see already it's completely transformed the face, just putting those features in. You can sew these just with your pearl thread. I would use eight ply pearl thread and you can do your classic um, stab back stitch to cover those lines all by hand or you can do what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it on the machine but I have Gudeman top stitching thread through my top thread and also on my bobbin. So it will sew it evenly and I will sew over each line twice. So this is heat erasable marker so I can stitch over these lines then I can give it a press and they'll all be um, taken away. So as I said I've got that exact face shape in your pattern templates so that you will get ex exactly correct. So I'm going to go ahead stitch over each one of those lines twice. And there you can see just how much that brings that little face to life there. That stitching, double row of stitching on each one. Remember that I used top stitching thread through my machine and my bobbin thread. I've gone ahead and sewn on the two buttons for eyes, but I've only sewn them with a couple of stitches because we actually use the eyes to attach them to the bag flap. But I just want them there in the right place. It's going to make it so much easier when we do that. But for now, we need to finish off this head and what we're going to do with that is we are going to add some clear craft glue to the whole back section of the head all the way around. Just avoid the eye area where we're going to be stitching through because we don't want to be going through a whole heap of um, that glue. But just to basically get those two pieces to join up. And quite close to the edge if you can. Then we're just going to line up those two pieces perfectly. If you've got any discrepancies, once you've glued it together, you can always trim it off. Just going to make sure that's all good because we're not turning this through. I'm going to let that dry, give that a fair bit of pressure. I'm going to let that dry and once that's dry, don't try and sew it until it is dry or you'll just struggle getting your needle through sticky glue and then I'm going to take my eight ply black pearl thread and sew a nice small blanket stitch right the way around. Now keep that blanket stitch quite small because it's meant just as an outline to isolate that head and it'll make it stand out on the flap of your bag. If you are going for this very animated look, it's absolutely imperative that you use a black outlining thread. Otherwise you'll just, it'll all just blend in together and you'll lose the sharpness of it. This will really make the bad bag pop. So I'm going to go ahead and get that stitching done. That little face is all complete and you can see what a difference it makes to have it outlined in that black thread. So now you just need to position it on your the front flap of our bag and I like to have about a centimetre and a half 
underneath from the base and I like the ears to extend over the top. So when you're looking at the bag, the little ears pop up over that top line. You of course can sit it lower if you like, but I think that is the best spot for it. And remember that we're not adding a top bag handle with this one because it will interfere with the ears. So all you need to do is just unpop that flat, make sure that's in the right position and stitch that piece straight through the eyes and that will really firmly, adhe firmly adhere it to uh, that front flap. You can add a little bit of clear craft glue on the underside first if you want to help you with that positioning. So get those stitched into place and of course you're using, you're wanting nice black eyes so make sure you stitch on with extra strong thread in your black thread. Let's get that sewn on and then we are going to move on and just create those two little uh, B little bag charms. There we go, that little face in place on that front bag flap, perfect little happy bear face. So now we are going to make those little bees. So this is the bee charm. It's just quite simply made out of beads, just one bead and buttons. So all in all you need two buttons for the wings that are a little bit bigger, four hole buttons if possible. You can use a two hole button, but four hole buttons are easier. Then you need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about nine buttons to make that little body in varying sizes. So you start from small, moving up to larger at the top before we add the wings. I'm using just a five ply pearl thread. You could certainly use a proper threading uh, jewelry thread that's a little bit stronger. Mine's not gonna come under any real duress. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start at the, my smallest bead at the bottom. I've got threaded up on a needle, just makes it easier. And I'm going to go through each bead one at a time. Just having that little striped effect of yellow and black and yellow and black. You can do this sort of thing and make it a dragonfly or anything else like that, or even just a lovely little stack of buttons just looks really lovely. All the way, one by one. So that final black one, and then I'm going to go in one of the white ones. I'm going to go in through my bead. I'm actually just going to go back out again and I'm going to let that loop stay there. Just pulling that all through. Just want to leave that loop at the top. Then I'm going to go through the other white one. And then back through those buttons, going into the direct opposite side of each button. Do check that you're doing that or it won't all come together nicely. Pretty simple to do. Bring that out through the base. Still holding on to that top. So that I've got a loop at the top, pushing that all down. I hope this is making sense. And then we've got that little B there. Now, what you need to do is decide how long you want the top loop. And this time I want it to be a little bit shorter than this one, because I want them to sit at different heights on my bag. So I really only need just a little bit of a loop on this one and I'm going to knot this off at the base. 
about four times, just like I have here, and then I'll snip those thread ends. My two little bees ready to hang. I'm going to just add mine to some little, uh, uh, little slip rings and little jump rings, and I'm going to add them to that. Remember, I left that little D ring there on the side and they will hang at the side there. So let me get that all put together and then we'll have a look at some other ideas of different faces you can add to this bag. So there we go. What an absolutely adorable little bag that is. I just love it. You can do that with so many different fabrics. Remember to keep your the actual bag itself. Try and keep that in a slightly heavier weight fabric. The bag will always be more stable if you do that, but aren't those little bee charms just adorable? Perfect for this. I would even wear this bag myself and I probably will style it up. As funny as that may seem. Um, very sweet. Open it up. Lovely pop of colour inside. And you can imagine, you can certainly make this up with a different coloured lining fabric to really change that up. And if you are going to add a top handle, if you're making the bag something like this and adding something different to the front, your top handle I've given you the pattern template for, this is simply a piece of double felt which has one piece of fabric also bonded to it. And then you cut out that strap, you blanket stitch it like we have with all of the other pieces, and then you just sew it with a button across the top there, give it a nice little pull up there, beautiful little boutique bag. You can make these really, really classy so they don't have to be novelty looking bags. It all depends on the fabric that you use and I'm actually super excited to see what you're going to do with these. I want to see so many different creative versions of these. Now, as far as something different to add to the front, if you go through my uh, all of my videos, you'll see there's just so many little templates that you can use to add to this bag. For example, little Miffy bunny on the front here would look beautiful and would it, wouldn't it make just the best little Easter bag? Just gorgeous. You can always enlarge some of these pattern pieces to fit. Any of my shelf sitters that have a face made like this, which don't have stuffing, um, your proportions will be absolutely perfect. You can just increase them in size if you want to. Um, I've got lots of different sort of uh, applique shapes that you can add, that you can put little owls on the front. I've certainly got little owls. There's so many, I could go through them all and find so many. I've got a little cow face that you could use to pop on there, just the sky's the limit. Or maybe like me, you've just got another idea for embellishing something like this. So. I hope you find this a really useful pattern. I certainly have. This will not be the last bag of this style that I make for myself. And they really are the perfect gift or perfect for on selling. So thank you all for joining me. I hope you had a little bit of fun along the way. I surely did. I am not kidding. I want to see all sorts of incredible creative bags because I know that some of you will already have ideas about other other ideas to put on the front of this bag and I'd like to see some really classy ones too so that'd be really fun for me so it'd be a great start to the new year making something a little bit different um, looking forward to masterclass it's almost upon us um, I'm very excited and remember I'm announcing our giveaway winner there too as well this month's project in masterclass is an absolute beauty I really really hope that you like it I'm pretty sure some of you have already guessed from the sneaky peek and I'm looking forward to revealing her to you. So everybody tune in with me on the 1st. I'm also doing a Q&A very soon. So look out for that video. I'll be giving you an invitation to ask any questions you like. We're going to come back and do a Q&A, which is one of my favourite things to do. Makes me feel very connected to you all. I hope you all had a fantastic Christmas, but now we're moving on to the new year and we've got a big creative year ahead. So everybody, keep on being creative. Remember to pay all of those good things forward. And until next time, it is Huru from me.